Hey guys, Josh from the Ancient History Guy here. Hello and welcome to all. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Anyways, today's topic is going to focus on one of my favourite emperors, Commodus, specifically on his advisor, Cleander. Cleander is a fascinating, almost Game of Thrones-like figure, so today is going to be really fun. Let's get into it. Now, Commodus is a sort of misrepresented figure in Roman history. Popular Hollywood depictions of Commodus portray him as a somewhat of a despot, violent and narcissistic. The truth is actually very different. You see, Commodus is perhaps one of the only emperors who actively sought out peace throughout the empire. His father, Marcus Aurelius, although largely considered to be one of the best Roman emperors of all time, spent most of his rule away from Rome, campaigning against migrating invading Germanic hordes. Now, although this resulted in Rome expanding and ultimately halting the Germanic invasions, the cost of life and the actual cost of the war was extraordinary, with Aurelius himself having to basically auction off most of his possessions in order to continue the war. Commodus almost immediately began to press new coins, devaluing the Roman currency and thus allowing him to pay off the huge debts that was caused by his father's war. Commodus brought peace to Rome and was rewarded, or more, rewarded himself with a triumph. This brought great excitement to Rome, with lavish games being held to celebrate the conclusion of the bloody war. Commodus became extremely popular, as the games were very well received by the Roman populace. Throughout much of his reign, Commodus remained extremely popular with the masses and actually with the army largely thanks to the grand publicity stunts used to win favour with the masses after those around him made increasingly stupid mistakes. However, Commodus, much like his father, wasn't exactly fond of the rich, manipulative senators, who he saw as really not doing anything to a earn their place there and b actually doing anything besides acquiring more power for themselves. This meant that straight from the beginning of his reign, Commodus was at odds with the senate, Perhaps the one group he should have actually at least made an attempt to get close to. Commodus was also not really sold on the idea of doing everything to run the state. Instead, he preferred to be the face of an empire run by delegation, using his advisors in order to enact his will on the empire. Commodus' popularity with the Senate took a massive dive when Sertorius, a former slave, was with him on his chariot during his triumph. Sertorius was promoted to a rather high position within Commodus' government, so much that he began to supersede the authority of the Roman senators. This understandably annoyed the rich privileged noble senators as well as a fair portion of the nobility including Commodus' own sister. An assassination attempt led by Commodus' sister and her allies was carried out, ultimately failing with the emperor's guards apprehending the would-be assassins. However, during the confusion, Sertorius was murdered by another member of Commodus' household, the freedman Cleander. Cleander made it out that Sertorius was murdered by the conspirators and made up a sob story about how he had been unable to save him. This apparent show of loyalty impressed Commodus, who quickly promoted Cleander to replace Sertorius. This was the first of many schemes Cleander would begin to implement. I think the best way to think of Cleander is sort of a discount Stalin, just without the brains to properly follow through with his grand plan. You see, Cleander was definitely a power-hungry individual and was set on reaching as high as he could in the Roman social structure. He had, after all, been a slave for many years and had somehow risen up to be a trusted individual within the imperial household. In order to consolidate his newfound power, Cleander began auctioning off roles and positions within the Roman Senate, a bit like how Stalin used his roles in order to bring in his own supporters. Remember, the rank he had inherited from Sertorius was actually above the Roman Senate. Now, Commodus actually knew about this, and he actually took a cut from the profits gained by selling off these Senate seats. However, much like Stanin, Cleander was appointing allies to important positions, thus securing his own personal power. Having gained enough influence and power, Cleander was eventually put in charge of the Praetorian Guard, the elite bodyguard that guarded the Emperor. Now, if anyone would say wanted to replace the Emperor, this was a prime position to be in. What other armed personnel would be so close to the Emperor? This is all just me speculating, but I think it's pretty clear what Cleander wanted. He wanted to be at the top of Roman society, and I personally do not think he would have been content with being just a puppet master. He already had an ally base in the Senate, and now he was in charge of the Praetorian Guard. However, Commodus was still extremely popular with the people in the army, 
so his reputation needed to be well destroyed. This was definitely the view that many within Rome held as Cleander became increasingly unpopular with the masses. Cleander of course kept all mentions of this dwindling public opinion away from Commodus, who pretty much remained oblivious as to how deeply the people were suspicious of Cleander. This of course all came to a head when Rome got hit by a grain shortage. The actual cause of this was the person in charge of the grain flowing into Rome had actually halted shipments and had placed the blame squarely on Cleander. The famine gradually got worse and worse, swaying public opinion against the former slave. Eventually, a mass protest at the popular chariot racing ground, the Circus Maximus, spontaneously erupted. This protest grew in size to the point where Cleander felt it was necessary to send a detachment of Praetorians to control the crowd. However, by this time, the police force of Rome had already responded to the riots and had actually sided with the crowds. Seeing that they could do nothing with the police there, the Praetorians gave way and allowed the protest to continue onwards towards Cleander. Cleander fled to Commodus, who was shocked to find out just how unpopular his advisor actually was. Knowing that there was a risk of civil war, Commodus immediately ordered Cleander's execution and, just for good measure, also executed Cleander's son. The mob seemed satisfied by this quick decisive action and so dispersed. So what do I think of this? Well, I think it demonstrates just how ambitious Cleander actually was. Cleander was clearly wanting to reach the top of Roman society and much like Stalin was given the position he needed in order to achieve this. I believe that if he hadn't been well caught off guard by another scheme, he would have probably have gathered enough power in order to do just flat out replace Commodus and become emperor himself. I think given our own recent history, it was bound to happen. The story is almost exactly the same as how Stalin rose to power, although obviously Stalin didn't get killed by a hungry riot. Did Cleander fail to help Commodus? Well, yes and no. Commodus began to take a more active role in the administration of the empire, which many considered a good thing. However, he also began to use the empire's funds in order to boost public opinion of him, which had obviously been dented by Cleander's antics. Commodus did this by participating in gladiatorial games. This, although probably a good idea from a marketing standpoint, ultimately led to Commodus having to tax the rich in order to support his grand schemes, which ultimately led to his own assassination. So, in a way, Cleander's schemes did actually bring about the fall of Commodus, just not in the way I believe Cleander originally intended. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.